So if you're a parent and, and realizing your kid has a problem, maybe they're spending way too much time on tech, you're probably wondering like, what do I do with this? What, how do I start even? I think one of the best ways is not freaking out, uh, being able to take kind of a calm, collected approach and thinking, what changes do I want to have happen? And coming up with a pretty clear plan of, here's what I want things to look like in my family or with my kids. And the clearer you can get with that, the better that's going to be for you. After you have a clear plan, it's going to be helpful to approach it with your kids and saying, hey, I'm really concerned with the way things are going in our family right now. I feel like we're spending too much time on tech, which is taking away from us as a family. So I've come up with a few ideas, and I want your input too. And involving them in the process, you're going to have a lot more buy-in. They're going to feel like it's not a me versus you thing, but more like how can we grow together thing, and which makes compliance far easier. So bringing it up, like here are my suggestions. I want us to be able to spend time together as a family at dinner table without technology. Let's start there, and then I have a few other ideas if once we get to that point. But this slow, consistent plan while having the kids kind of involved in that process is going to be one of the best ways of making changes. And sometimes it's rough. Sometimes it's really, really difficult because you're going to think, how can I possibly follow through on this? I'm so busy. Or maybe this is a problem for me too. Uh, so it's, that's why getting that clarity, really having an idea like, here's what I wanted to have happen. Here's how we're going to have to make some of those changes. Let's start it out. Uh, let's take it nice and slow for us. There's, a, there's been a change with the introduction of technology. Uh, when most parents grew up, there was no internet, no phones, no, or no like cell phones that way. All of our interactions were very face-to-face. -face. Maybe, maybe phone call, but that was kind of like the extent of it. Now, we can contact people from across the world and we don't actually ever see them or have to see them. We can text message people, which creates kind of another layer of distance uh, from, from our interactions with one another. This has been fantastic in a lot of ways. The fact that we can reach people that we've never been able to reach before is really, really good. And there can be some problems with that. As we lose kind of those face-to-face -face reactions, sometimes we can get people starting to do mean behaviors or trolling online or even cyberbullying now. Um, this becomes devastating because there's, nothing, there's no face-to-face um, -face reaction here. It used to be if you would say something really mean to someone, you would see them either get hurt or angry or respond negatively to what you're saying. And that gave us feedback for what we wanted to do. Like, oh, that clearly wasn't the right thing to say or I want to patch that up. Now we don't get that same feedback. Uh, and so cyberbullying becomes a really big issue here where people can say mean things and be really harsh to each other. And it's like, I can get away scot-free. There's, there's nothing that's going to change my behavior at this point. That can become devastating as both a recipient and a giver uh, or a, a perpetrator of cyberbullying. Uh, and so it's important for parents to be able to kind of monitor online relationships in a lot of ways. Make sure that their kids aren't being bullied in this way. And if so, I'm kind of wondering what they can do. Or if their kids are actually bullying others and saying mean things, being able to correct that and give them some of those experiences, knowing that's not how we treat people. In terms of uh, parents kind of asking, what can I do if my kid's being cyberbullied? The first thing is calling it out. Uh, so being able to help your kid identify that that type of behavior is, is unacceptable. And if people are treating them that way, uh, obviously trying to work through it first and teaching them some of the ways of responding respectfully and civilly while, while trying to work through an issue. And if the bullying just continues uh, relentlessly that way, knowing it's okay to block people. Uh, it's okay to mute people on Snapchat or in different social media sites or even in video games being able to like mute people and knowing you don't have to listen to that uh, is a good way or a good coping skill for them to know how to manage this so they can keep some of that esteem and not take on those same behaviors and know that that's how we treat people.